In 1986, the residents of New High Street in Headington, near Oxford, woke up to find there was a new addition to the road. A shark in the roof of number two. It was commissioned by the owner of the house. It's protest artwork, anti-war, symbolic of bombs crashing down into buildings. And of course, English planning laws do not allow someone to suddenly install a giant shark sculpture in their roof in a residential area. At least, not without consulting the neighbours first. So in 1986, my dad put a 25-foot fiberglass and steel shark through the roof of his house. He had just bought his first house. And the first night he moved in, he heard planes going overhead. He was sort of woken by this. And in the morning, he read the newspaper and I suppose saw destroyed houses in Libya, been bombed. The story goes that my dad and sculptor John Buckley were sat drinking, celebrating the purchase of this house, sort of mulling over how to, to deal with the, the shock of, of the bombing of, of Tripoli they were up for a fight and they did this shark without planning permission in secret. There was a sort of mixed reaction. A lot of people were shocked and didn't quite know what was going on. I think some people thought it might have been real, which is an eye opener, certainly uh, funny looking back. A lot of people just loved it and thought it was brilliant right from the word go. The council obviously were very much not here, thank you, and certainly not without planning permission. This is outrageous. So the months and years after the shark was installed played out exactly as you would expect. The council said take it down, the owner said no. It went to court, it took six years to resolve and the shark was eventually allowed to stay when a senior British government official intervened and said yes, this has enough artistic merit that as a one-off it can stay. And now it's an icon of the area, known around the world and as far as I can tell, generally liked by the folks around here perhaps a bit more than the current owner would like. Before we get to that though, I did have a couple of more practical questions about the shark. Like, does it have a head? It doesn't have a head. It's just a half bust of a shark crashing through the roof. I think they cut a crude hole and dropped that in with a crane <laughs> initially, and then sort of shored it up as soon as they humanly could. So there was no preparation, obviously, because that would have tipped people off. It's fiberglass with steel reinforcements. The steel struts on the inside connect out through the ceiling and down into the wall. So it's, it's structurally connected. It's, it's there to stay. It needs repainting every now and then. And there's just a continual checking to make sure everything's like in tip top condition. This year, thanks to a nomination from a presumably well-meaning member of the public, the shark was put on the local list of heritage assets. Now, the shark isn't on the national list of protected buildings yet, it could still be taken down without breaking the law, but local registration is often the first step to being on the national list. And owning a listed building is a pretty significant burden. The local government requires you to keep it in good condition and also keep it the same. And if you don't, they can fix it themselves and bill you. Art, just like anything else, requires upkeep. And there are news stories that show that over the last few decades, the shark and this house were sometimes in extremely poor condition drop a shark through the roof of your house, there are there's some leakage problems that one might immediately encounter. It turns out it's very difficult to repair those until finally my mum ultimately stepped in and did the whole thing up into, I think, quite a nice standard. So I've been renting it out as an Airbnb. It's just a, a lovely place and it means a lot to me. And I, I like that people can come and be sort of close to it and, and part of it too. So someone put it forward for the Oxford Asset Heritage Register. On the council website, they say that there's absolutely no restrictions placed. This is just for their record keeping. But they do mention that any planning permission changes will necessarily take this into consideration. I thought this was an interesting take because, well, nominally this is here to preserve the shark, but this is controlled through the planning laws. And it seems to me you can't really preserve something that's specifically there to challenge that, that seems to be completely absurd and, and to miss sort of the artistic point, which is, is probably the thing you would want to preserve if you were preserving a piece of art. As a bystander, I love art like this, where part of the work is how it interfaces with the world and with bureaucracy. But for the local officials, it must be frustrating because they know that anything they do to this shark becomes part of the art, part of the story. List it, unlist it, demand its removal, demand its preservation, deliberately ignore it, whatever they do, that's art now. I wouldn't want to be in that position. So my dad passed away in 2019. We spoke a little bit about the listing just before he did. He had sort of mixed feelings. On the one hand, he had been sort of fighting against the council for like a large portion of his life. And on the other hand, he sort of had these considerations about the legacy of the place and moving forward and, and liked that they were acknowledging him. 
you've got this idea that the council have come around and, and changed their mind and are now embracing something that they weren't before. And on the other hand, you've got this, this, I think, slightly more truthful side, which is that these are totally different councillors. The councillors that hated it are all gone. Uh, and these new ones, although they love it, are applying the same kind of control, which is, uh, again, flies in the face of the, the piece. I guess there's a bit of conflict there. But I, I wish he was still here to ask and, and see how it all panned out. I, I think he would, he'd like that we're still talking about it today very much. For now, the shark is not protected, not officially. In a few years, who knows?